So, you got a Baofeng radio. Maybe a UV5R. Now what the heck do you do? Now if you just bought one of these neat little $30 radios and have no idea what to do next, this video is for you. Let's go. Now the first thing you need to do is download Chirp. It's available at the following URL. Now this supports a ton of radios, and today we're using the Baofeng UV5R. Now click on Get It here to get the software. And close this stupid window. And click Download the latest Chirp build here. And I'm using Windows, so I'll click this installer. And then click Next. Click I Agree. And install it to your folder. Then click Finish. So you need one of these programming cables. If you didn't get one with your Baofeng, I have a link in the description for where you can get one. I also have a link to the full radio kit that I'm working with today, which comes with a programming cable. So let's look at our Baofeng kit. Let's see here. We've got the programming cable, as I mentioned. We've got the radio, a battery, an uh, even bigger battery. Put all this junk. We've got a charger, got a headset, a little clip, got an antenna, of course, and at least fancy base charger. All of this comes in this box. And like I said, I've got a link in the description to the one that I bought. I have several of these things and I love them. Now I'll plug this into my PC and we'll get started. You plug one end into the USB port and the other end into the side of the radio. Then turn it on and turn the volume all the way up. And now we have Chirp loaded up and I want to connect to our radio. Now the first thing that we're going to do is back up this radio. Go to radio, download from radio. Now I already have a port established here, but if you don't, click on help me. Then unplug the radio and click OK. Then plug it back in. And this will establish a port for you. For vendor, select Baofeng. And the model is UV5R. Now the first thing it will do is download an image from the device, so click OK. It will start cloning the default image from the radio. Now the image is just a set of channels that you have programmed into your radio. Cool, now we have the default image, and if you want, you can save it in case you want to restore it to this later. And now we have the radio backed up. Easy stuff. Let's put some frequencies in it. Now there are a few ways you can add frequencies. Let's start with preloads. If you go to File, Open Stock Config, you can see a bunch of preloaded frequencies. Now if you have a pro account at Radio Reference, which I highly recommend, you can download the frequencies from there. Go up to Radio, then to Query Source, and radioreference.com. I put in my username and password, and then my zip code. It will now query channels and add them in. And I can go through this and take only the channels that I want. Some of these things are like public works and school buses and stuff. I don't care about any of this. But down here I see some amateur radio repeaters, and I'm interested in those. So I'll copy those. Go back to my radio tab, click on the zero, and paste them. Now this will overwrite my current memory. But now I have some frequencies to use. Note that the squelch and offsets are already set here, and I'm using high power on all of them. So I'll save this image. Now let's query Repeater Book and see what kind of frequencies I can find there. Repeater Book has a ton of repeaters in its database, so I'm going to look for some amateur radio repeaters in my area. Notice you can filter for certain bands. I want 2 meter and 70 centimeter. You can also select modes. Now FM is the only mode I can use with this radio, so I'll choose that. and a new tab opens up with a ton of new repeaters. There are actually more repeater channels than this radio can hold. Maybe I should narrow it down to repeaters in my area, so I go back to repeater book. Now I go to Google Maps and find the city that I live in. I'll right click on it and select the coordinates and copy them to my clipboard. 
Now I'll put those coordinates in and limit it to about 80 kilometers. And add the filters again and query the database. And now I have a bunch of repeaters. I think I'll grab about 50 or 100 of them and add them in. Okay, perfect. Now we're ready to write this to the radio. I'll select radio, then upload to radio, and click OK. Now it gives some instructions here. Make sure to turn the radio off and then on again, and turn the volume all the way up. And you can see it's cloning to the radio. And it's done. Now let's try manually adding a frequency. So this is one of my favorite repeaters, and I want to add it manually to my radio. Notice that it's already added in here from repeater book, but I'm going to do this just to show you how it's done. Now I want it at channel zero, so I'll right click on zero and add a row above. And in here, I will put the downlink frequency. Now I can see we have an uplink tone and a downlink tone. So I'll set the tone mode to tone and choose 100. And this is pretty common. It shows an offset of plus six megahertz, and that's already set, but we just want to make sure that it is. And now I'll go to the file and save my image. Now, quick aside here, downlink is the frequency that you're listening on. Uplink is the frequency that you transmit on. So you transmit on a different frequency, it goes to the repeater, and it puts it out to another frequency. The offset is the difference between those frequencies. So if you set a downlink with a 0.06 offset, then your radio will transmit on this uplink frequency. The tones are here to open the repeater. Your radio will send a tone to let the repeater know that you want to use it. And now we can clone this to our radio. But before we get started, let's configure our radio. You can do that with Chirp as well. With your image loaded up, click on the settings tab. This will pull the settings from your radio. Now look here in display mode. I like to change these. When frequency is displayed, it looks like this. However, I like to change them to name so that they look like this. And I like to make sure the Roger beep is off. This is a beep that comes after you stop transmitting and it's kind of annoying to others. Now there are tons of settings you can play with, but I'll save that for another video. We are ready to roll. Let's write this to the radio. And the radio is now ready to go. Standard disclaimer here, do not transmit if you don't have a license. You will get caught and there are hefty fines. You can buy a lot of radios with that money instead. I do have an amateur radio license, so I'm going to try it out. All right, let's give it a shot here. Kilo Kilo 7 November Papa Sierra, radio check. Now that beep that you hear means that I am connecting to the repeater. So most repeaters will give back some sort of beep or squelch tail at the end of it. I don't hear anyone on here today, but I know that the repeater is working because of that beep. And that's all there is to it. Enjoy your new radio and let me know in the comments if this has helped you out. Be sure to like this video and subscribe for more radio and techie stuff. 73, friends.